Okay, let's get started. This is me doing the initial concept uh, slash initial line work for my new playing card project titled The Arthurian. And this project's based on the King Arthur legend, and it's going to be done in the style of the Book of Kells. And you can see right there on the right one of the reference images that I have that I'm working from of the Book of Kells. Book of the Kells is a uh, Illumina manuscript written in the 5th and 6th century in uh, what is now Great Britain, Scotland, Ireland, that area. And it was basically uh, a book before the Gutenberg, Gutenberg Press. Uh, all Bibles were handwritten, usually by monks, and this is uh, one of those examples. And they usually made them incredibly beautiful with awesome illustrations. Uh, and I love the illustrations in the Book of the Kells because it's just right up my alley with tons of line work, tons of detail, really incredible colors. And so that's kind of my inspiration. And I've been wanting to do, I've been inspired from, I've been inspired by the Book of Kells for a long time. And so that's kind of where we get it. So here I'm just uh, starting to just uh, basically, I have, I have pulled in my pencil sketch that I did by hand. Uh, I just scanned it, brought it in, you know, put the opacity down so I could see it. Uh, and I use the pencil sketches, you know, just as a guide. And then I'll go in and then using reference and I'll create, uh, you know, much tighter illustrations. Like right here, you can see that, you know, my pencil sketch, I just used, I just drew a circle for the pommel of the sword of the Excalibur. But now you can see that I'm going back in and, you know, actually drawing the details of the design that is that's inspired by the book of the Kells that I have up on the right and you'll notice you'll notice quite a bit like right here I'm going back and forth from a reference I'll copy and paste parts that I like you know elements that I like corner pieces how curves you know transition different parts of elements and I'll use that and I'll just look at it and then I'll just you know <coughs> incorporate that design language into my own work and uh, that way I'm not you know I'm not sitting here copying paste you know copying and pasting from uh, this work of art but I'm creating my own stuff based on this style and you know a lot of the design language of like the way it does curves and these little these little circles and the the points and stuff you know I'm trying to get those derived from the original artwork and just bringing that into my own my own artwork here I'm drawing the uh, the uh, the cross the cross member of the, uh, the Excalibur, and one of the things one of the things that's very prevalent with uh, the artwork that is in the Book of the Kells, a lot of the stuff is representational. It's not like you know it's not photorealistic. It's not you know okay I'm drawing Excalibur inside the stone. I'm not you know. I'm not drawing a realistic sword in a realistic looking stone. Everything is kind of representational and you'll kind of see that as the as the drawing progresses. How the sword, it's not, you know, it's not a realistic looking sword, but it's representational using the kind of the Celtic themed art, especially with the stone because the stone uh, the stone is is it, d it doesn't really look like a stone, but it's representational of the sword and the stone. Um uh, but I will use, I will use, like on the stone itself, I'll use a lot of blues, grays, uh, a lot of stone colors, just to help reiterate the fact that, you know, this is, rep this, this, you know, this design element at the bottom is representat representational of the stone. And then I'll use lots of, uh, you know, reds, golds, and stuff like that for the sword itself. So, uh, one of the things, one of the things that I, uh, you know, noticed a lot really quickly with this type of artwork is the fact that you know it's very very a lot of the design elements like the Celtic knotwork and the designs are very 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 small and you have to really kind of I have you'll see me zooming out a lot because I zoom out to to see the scale of all the line work that I'm doing based on the fact that you know my final product is going to be a deck of cards or a box that holds a deck of cards that's really only, you know, three and a half inches tall. 
And so I really have to look back and, you know, just with the limitations of uh, offset printing, I have to be aware of, okay, if I'm drawing these details this small, how is that going to translate once it gets offset printed and, you know, and it's at size at about three and a half inches tall. So you'll see me zooming out a lot. And I think that's very important for anybody that's designing playing cards or any kind of print work, really. You really, you really need to look at your artwork at size, whether that's zooming out in Photoshop or whatever program you're using is zooming out to the size of the print or if not even better, really, you know, along the, you know, all along the process, you know, just do a quick black and white print of your designs at size and see what it looks like. Uh, most of my, anytime I'm doing playing card art, uh, uh, I usually work at size at twice the resolution of print. So usually, you know, nine times out of 10, print resolution of offset printing is 300 dots per inch, 3, 3D, 300 DPI. And so like with this, with this tuck case or the box, I'm working at size at 600 DPI. And the reason why I work at 600 DPI is one, if I was at 300 DPI, it would be really fuzzy when I was drawing and I don't like it being fuzzy. And I've, I've learned just from experience in the past that if I work, you know, say double, double the resolution, when I go and shrink, when I go and shrink my artwork to the 300 DPI, it just naturally has this shrinking a high resolution image down has a really nice sharpening effect to the line work. And I've just, I've learned that over the past and that's just kind of what I, that's what I do on either it's a playing card or a tuck case or whatever it is. Uh, you'll see here I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, draw this dog head into the corner of this stone. <laughs> you'll see, you'll see I like erased, the, I erased, I erased the nose like three or four times and I just realized that, oh, okay, I can't get this to work. And so I just move on. And you know, that's the good part about this is I'll do the pencil sketch. I'll bring it in and, you know, I purposely don't, you know, go into a lot of detail in the pencil sketches just because I find it a lot easier just to experiment with different different design options on the computer because, I mean, I, I don't have to erase and I have an undo button. And so I can go in and quickly work on something like, oh, I'm going to use this dog head. Let's see how that works. And it doesn't work. And I just... Uh, you know, I'll just uh, kick that idea and just keep moving on. Uh, and so it really just helps me be more intuitive where I kind of just, I create the basic framework uh, in the pencil and then I just keep going more detailed stuff uh, on the computer. <clears throat> You'll see me here just, uh, I'm just continuing finishing up the outline work of this border that goes around the whole design. Um, you know, you may be asking, you know, well, if this whole thing is mirrored, why don't you just draw the whole thing and then draw the whole thing and then mirror it? Why are you mirroring piece by piece and, you know, kind of putting it together as you go? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I, one of the things that I've found with playing cards, especially because a lot of times playing cards are, are mirrored and you've got like the top of the card and the bottom of the card being the same. And especially with something like this that's symmetrical in design, uh, you know, it's so hard, it's so hard sometimes to visualize what, you know, what an arc looks like or what a, a design looks like when it's not, when it's not mirrored and it's not, doesn't have its mirrored side and symmetrical. So a lot of times I'm always, I'll do a piece, I'll mirror it, make sure that it kind of the form and the shape is right, especially if that's an arc or something like that. I got to make sure that it's right and it feels good and then I'll move on. And it's just kind of like a building block type thing. Uh, you'll see here, now I'm starting the, the text uh, via Thurian. Uh, one of the things that I love about the Book of Kells, uh, especially is their kind of, uh, the way that they have their type treatment. Uh, you know, these people were doing it, you know, by hand. Uh, they probably didn't have, didn't, didn't have much of, they didn't have a sweet like ruler or whatever like like we have now or a computer that you can hold down shift to make a straight line but it's amazing how how much life the letters have and and that was one of the things that really drew drew me to this this the book of kells because i love 
I love typography and I, 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 uh, I love the design of, you know, custom lettering and stuff like that. And so I'm just taking some of those design elements, the, you know, the design language from the, the typography from some of the reference images. And I'm just trying to, you know, fit, fit it in with my theme. And uh, I, in the beginning, I didn't, I didn't really know. When I started this, I knew that I wanted to have the sword. I wanted to have Excalibur, and I wanted to have the stone, and I wanted to have Excalibur in the stone on the front of the tuck case. But I was really kind of apprehensive putting the actual, you know, lettering of the Arthurian on the front because I just didn't know how. I just didn't know how I was going to have, I didn't know how I was going to work in this, you know, what I think it's like nine letters, nine letter long, you know, word when I knew I was going to have the hilt of the sword coming up all the way to the top of the tuck case. But that's kind of where this U kind of, this U, this U comes in. And it was kind of really a good coincidence because, you know, words that have odd numbers of letters, there's always one letter that's in the middle that you can, you know, in a design, you can put it in the middle. So it worked out really well for me because I could put the U in the middle because the U is, uh, you know, the U is the middle letter for this design. Thanks for watching. I hope that you uh, learned something today and maybe were inspired uh, to do your own artwork by what you saw. If, uh, if you liked the video and want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks. Say subscribe. Subscribe. Say it three times. Subscribe. I can't say subscribe. I always mess it up.